Now we know what our basic CMS is going to look like. We want to set up our database. We want to connect to our database and set up the general structure of our application. And this is really important to keep everything as tidy as possible. So the first thing that we want to focus on is the CSS file here, which is going to control the styles. So you can either copy this down from this video, I'll just scroll down so you can catch it, or you can download it as part of this course. So now that we've got the CSS file in place in this CSS directory, this is within a uh, CMS directory here. And you can see I have this open in my browser. So we have the CSS uh, directory just there. And we'll be creating all of our files and folders within this directory. So as long as you're at this stage, we can go ahead and start writing some PHP code. But the first thing I want to do is just focus on my database design. So if you pull up the uh, client that you use to edit your database with, you can see I've created a database called CMS here. So we're going to create a table in here called pages, and this is going to hold all of our pages. So the client I'm using automatically generates an ID field, but if yours doesn't, you might want to go ahead and add this ID field. The type of this needs to be integer. You can leave the length at the default. 11 is quite long, but it doesn't really matter. We want this to be unsigned because it's always going to be above zero. And more importantly, we have this as the primary key in our database. So make sure you add a primary key uh, to this table. And we also have an auto increment on this under extra. And all this means is whenever we create a new page, it automatically gets assigned a new ID and this increments from one upwards. And that allows you to uniquely identify each record in your table. So let's uh, go ahead and add the other fields that we need. The first one is label, which remember is the text that's displayed uh, for the link when your user clicks that link. And we're going to set the type uh, for this as a varchar. And that just means a variable character length. So you can choose anything for the length, anything sensible. In our case, we're gonna choose 20. We don't want to allow null for this. It's always going to be required. All of these uh, are going to be required. So that's pretty much it for uh, the label. So we've got a varchar of 20. So the next one is the title of the page. Again, this is going to be a varchar, but this can be a little bit longer. It's entirely up to you which value you give it. And again, let's uncheck allow null. So next is the body. This isn't going to be a varchar. It's going to be a text type. This is going to allow for a lot more storage and we don't need to give it a maximum length. This is just a more convenient and appropriate uh, data type for our body. So again, we're going to uncheck allow null. We also have our slug, which is a varchar. And I'm going to set this uh, the same as the title. So you might want to auto generate the slug at some point, but we're going to be manually entering this, but we're going to assume it's the same length as our title. So I'm going to uncheck allow null again. So the next is the created date, and this is going to be a timestamp. Um, we aren't going to allow null on this because we always want to fill it, but the next one is updated. That's a timestamp. And we do want to allow null on this because when we create a page initially, we're going to insert a date here. When we update it, we'll insert a date here. So updated can initially be null. So this is pretty much it. We've got our um, table set up. Uh, let's go to content and just add some test content in here just so we can get a feel for this. And this will also allow us to work out how we're going to generate our created and updated dates as well. So when I click here, this will automatically assign an ID of one. Yeah, it hasn't shown just yet. So I'm going to say the label for this is first page and you can see that ID has been generated there and created has also been auto generated. If this doesn't happen for you, you can go ahead and use the now function in capital letters with parentheses afterwards and you can hit enter and that will automatically insert the date for you and you can do the same for updated. So the title can just be this is the first page, the body here we can just say welcome to the first page and the slug will just say first hyphen page with no spaces. 
So now we've got a record in the in here. This is going to help us when we actually start to build the home page, which we're going to focus on first. Then we can actually see some data coming through. And then later on, we can remove this when we add the ability to add records in as well. So now that we've got our database set up, we need to work out how we're going to structure our application. So I'm going to create a new folder within the root directory CMS, and this is just going to be called app. And inside app, we're going to store things like functions, uh, the views for our application, and also our start file, which is going to set everything up that we need. So let's create a new file in here, and we're going to call this start.php. So we're going to open our PHP tags. Now what we're going to do for the purpose of the video, just in case we come across any errors, is we're going to use INI set and we're going to change display errors on. This saves us having to change it in our PHP uh, configuration file. Uh, we don't want it to be a global on for display errors. This is purely on a application basis. So we're just going to turn this on now. When we're finished developing, we can go ahead and either comment this out or remove it altogether. So now what we need to do is define some of the paths for our application. Um, we're going to define the root of the app, so basically just this root here. And we're also going to define the base URL for our application as well. That will just allow us to easily generate links. So we're going to set these as globals. You don't have to do this. We can use uh, other methods of conf configuration. But since this is such a small app, we'll stick with globals. And here we used two underscores, dir, and then two underscores. So let's just go ahead and echo our app root and see what that gives us. Now we can't access this file just yet because it's hidden away in this app folder. We could go ahead and navigate to this, but I'm going to create a new file just inside of the root directory and call this index.php. And this is going to serve as our home page. So what we want to do in here is we want to require in app start.php so that will require this file in it will do everything that we need to in here and at the moment we're just echoing out the app root so when I refresh you can see that app root just here so it's basically the root the app directory where we're going to be referencing things like our views uh, and anything else we need to later on so now what we're going to do is define our base URL again this is going to allow us to uh, inside of our views, which are essentially what's displayed to the user, uh, the correct links based on our absolute URL and then path. So base URL, and all this is, is simply a case of heading over to your browser, going ahead and copying this URL, pasting it in, and I'm just going to get rid of the, the trailing forward slash there. So now that we've done that, we haven't done much at all. Uh, but the next thing we want to do is connect to our database so we can start to actually output the pages that are within our uh, database table. So we're going to say uh, db equals, and we're going to assign to this a new PDO object. And all PDO is, is a way to access our database, but we can use different drivers. Now I'm using a MySQL database, so in here I'm going to type MySQL. And then I'm going to provide the information about my uh, MySQL server and then my authentication details as well. So my username and password. If you just set MySQL up, this will likely be root and root, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So the host is always going to be something like localhost if you're just developing on your computer or 127.0.0.1. And then we want to define our database name as well. In this case, it's CMS. If you don't remember, that's just here. So the next thing in the next argument, so this all here is the first argument. The next is the username. In my case, it's root. And the third is the password. In my case, it's root. And this is usual for most uh, default installations. So what we've now done is got our database connection set up. But let's go ahead and look at the structure of the rest of our application. So inside of app, we want uh, a folder here called views. This is basically where we're going to be storing uh, the, the markup that we have for outputting pages. Uh, we're going to include our admin views in here. 
uh, the page itself, etc. So we're going to leave this empty for now because we're not doing much in here. Now, what we also want is we want a folder in here for our admin access. So this is basically where the files are going to be stored to go ahead and add pages, delete pages, edit, and then obviously our admin home, which is going to list our pages. So we're not going to be looking at any kind of authentication here apart from basic HTTP authentication. And if you're using Apache, all that means is creating a new file in here called .htaccess. And we're also going to be creating an HT password file as well. And we'll go through this in just a minute. So HT password, P-A-S-S-W-D. So once they're created, if we go ahead and head over to just admin, you can see that we don't see anything in here. Now our goal is to protect this uh, by allowing a username and password to be uh, given. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this over and you can see exactly what this uh, entails. So we have an authentication type of basic. We have an auth name, which is just what's displayed to the user when they uh, hit forward slash admin. We have an auth user file, which is an absolute path to your HT password file. So you'll need to modify this for your uh, path. And you can see that points to forward slash admin and then this HT password file. And then we have require a valid user. So what is a valid user? Well, when we refresh now, we, you can see we get a prompt for authentication, the username and the password. Now I can type anything in here, but at the moment we don't have any username and password stored in here. So we get an uh, authorization error, a 401. So we're going to head over to something like HT Password Generator. Uh, there's a website here. There's plenty of tools online, so you can go ahead and choose the one you want. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my username there, and I'm going to go ahead and type in a password and click Create HT Access File. So that gives me the following here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to paste this into HT password. And now when I go ahead and refresh on admin, I can type in Alex. My password just happens to be password hit enter. And there we go. So I'm in. So that is pretty much the basic structure of our application. We've got our admin area that we've just created, which is HTTP uh, auth protected. We've got our app folder, which stores our views and also our start file where we connect it to our database and define some uh, basic config here. We've got our CSS directory, which you would have downloaded or copied over, which basically contains the styles that we're going to be uh, using for this. And then we have index.php, which at the moment isn't doing anything. But in the next part, we're going to look at outputting all of the pages that we have within our database.